Sava Nkutu, Minister of Works, Housing and Transport. Sava Nkutu is born in Nakibembe village, Bugweri County, Iganga District, on the 15th of November, 1930. His parents, the late Aji Ayushi Kirunda, and the late Zatalian Namuwaya Mkuta family, belongs to one of the second royal clan of Busoga. Balsemena district, descendant of Bunyoro royal family. Its roots can be found within the migrant Bunyoro prince, Kakai, son of Omukama Agutamba. Then the king of Bunyoro. The clan name is Mehan, which means to break a breakaway clan from Bunyoro due to violent royal succession battle. The clan then settled down its roots in Bugweri County. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss your daily source of information on Uganda. Let me be clear and let's get started. The young Mkutu was a beneficiary of a clan tradition handed down by, by some member clan leaders of the early generation to focus on very limited resources available, especially on education and career development. Bugweri best hoped in the future was to enable a Ganga generation in order to provide leadership in Uganda. Following tradition, Prince Muabe assumed leadership of Bugweri after they lost, after the last pre-colonial chief member, Munhulo, who was deposed and exiled in Kenya by the British. The young Saban Kutu studied at Nwiri College and later trained at Kimberley and Makerere College. As a teacher, he was one of the first Muslim in Uganda to get a secular education. He served as a teacher and later as the headmaster of Bwala in Masaka. As I said before, most of our politicians who came before us 
I had a lot to do with teaching, education. Across Africa in 1960, it was very common to educate African teachers. Most of them re-emerged as nationalist leaders. It was during this period that Mkutu became involved in the nationalistic movement for Uganda independence. Through Uganda National Congress, UNC. And later, the Uganda People's Congress, UPC of Dr. Apollo Milton Obote. He met Uganda future Prime Minister, Milton Obote, during secondary school in Mwiri. And the two became friends. They were close very close to one another. And that friendship grew. When we got independence in April, 1962, Nkutu, with the backing of his friend, the Prime Minister and support of Prince Ziraba Muzale stood for election and was elected into Parliament on the UPC ticket to replace Busoga, Southeast Constituency. Which comprised of the present day Bugwiri and Kigulu County, Iganga District, Bunya County, and the whole of Busoga. And Amayinga district. He represented Busoga in Parliament until the military overthrow of a body, first government by Idi Amin Dada. Saban Mukutu served as permanent secretary for economic affairs in the office of the prime minister, 1962 to 1963. He then doubled as a deputy minister of education in 1963. 1964, before becoming Deputy Minister of Works in 1964 to 1966. Uganda People's Congress government chief whip and then minister in parliament, 1964-1966. Minister of Health, 1966-1967. Minister of Works, Housing, Transport and Communication, from 1966-1967.
from 1967 to 1971. He was the national chairman of Uganda People's Congress from 1968 to 1973. The young Saban Kutu was a man with vision. He oversaw the execution, completion, upgrading, and maintenance of a hundred of infrastructure, infrastructure projects across Uganda. He laid down foundation for development. He was a man free from corruption. tribal, his aims and objectives was the development of Uganda. Some of his work include a quatch bridge, the new Entebbe International Airport, Soroti Flying Schools, Airfield. He was a man of honor who really loved his job. Ah. He never played a hide and seek game. He saw a lot of aerodromes in 18 districts of Uganda. Dual carriage way. Jinja to Kakira, Kampala to Gulu Road, Highway, and so many highway connecting the district with Kampala City. He oversaw the building of the railway line from Busia to Gulu. He was in charge of national housing and many more. The Legion oversaw the completion of construction and successful opening of 21 modern district hospitals connecting major regions to Uganda. Let's be honest. with one another. Here we have a young man who did more in a limited time than what we lately did for the last 40 years. Following the military coup in 1971, Saban Mkutu 
was arrested and detained without trial at Mackinder military base. As I said before, at this moment, when we are covering the people who built Uganda, he is one of the former ministers who came on top and his record is noted. His work as a young man at that moment goes without saying. He did a lot of wonderful job in uplifting up the people of Uganda. And he has to be honored for the job he did. He made a difference to the life of so many Ugandans. Although some of our new generation today may not even understand or know the name Saban Nkutu. When he was arrested and taken to the military police barracks, they kept him there for several months. When he was released, he retired and retreated to a quiet life of a private business man and refused to go into exile despite repeated threats and harassment from security organs in 1973. You see, we have, at that moment, Ugandans who really love their country. Some of them refuse to go into exile. People like Nkutu refuse to go into exile. People like Tiberio Kenya Tuoma refuse to go into exile. People like Alija Latim, the opposition leader, the Democratic Party at that moment, refuse to go into exile. They wanted to stay close to their people, the people who elected them into parliament. They were down to heart people who love Uganda and love the work they were doing. And in some cases, it led to their death which was not really warranted. As I said, they refused to flee into exile. The threat was known. The harassment from security organs in 1973 Saban Mkutu became the fifth former member of the Obote's cabinet. To meet the same fate. 
in the Rama, to his death. As I said before, those who abuse their power, use state power to abuse the rights of others. And this type of people should not forget that what you do to others will come back to own you even many years later. Wang O, the fireplace. Honor Saban Kutu as the real son of Uganda who did all he could to serve people, to serve his citizen with honor and defend their dignity. It is difficult to find this type of leaders today. Let me be honest with you. None of us or none of the leaders of today had the talent this young generation of leaders who led us after independence. To all of you, you may be gone, but we will always remember who you are we will make sure that some of the work you did for the people of Uganda, those hospitals, those roads, those schools that you managed to, put, to build, we will honor them even after death. And thank you very much for the job you did. And remember, I will be back.